Hello everybody. Good morning. Good Tuesday morning to you. Today is Tuesday, November the 2nd, uh, 2021. And um, it is such a good day. It's going to be a good day. You know why? Because I set my mind to make it a good day. That's why. Yeah, we've been learning that it starts right there, right? It starts right there. So um, thank you guys for joining me for devotion time. I really appreciate it. And it feels great to get together in the Lord, doesn't it? So uh, we are in uh, Philippians still. And I think we might actually wrap it up today. So let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer and we'll get right into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for those that are listening, that they will be touched by your word, that they will be changed by your word. They will be encouraged by your word. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity. I ask that you would uh, let the um, meditations of my heart be acceptable to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, so Philippians chapter 4, I'm going to start with verse 14, and I'm going to read right through chap uh, verse 23, and that's the end of the chapter, and um, it, it's basically just a sum up. Paul just kind of sums up his letter to the church of Philippi, and, um, and let's see what he has to say, all right? Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the manner of giving and receiving but you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I have... Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I, have, I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to unpack here, isn't there? Well, um, let's let's go back and talk about some of those first verses that we read. Um, Paul talks in thanks and um and he's saying thank you for your gift. Okay, so uh we read earlier in the chapter, not in the chapter, excuse me, in this book that Epaphroditus had come to them. Let me uh, go back and find it here. Um, let's see here. In verse 25 of chapter 2, it says, I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need. Okay, so apparently the church of Philippi had... Uh, Epaphroditus. They loaded him down with with all all of the things, which are whatever things there were that they had sent, um, sent them with him to go down to um, Rome, and I, I believe it was Rome. I could be wrong, but sent it to go take them all to Paul, who was in prison. Well, now. Paul is saying, okay, I'm sending Epaphroditus back to you now. You know, he's just basically saying the same, you know, doing the same thing, except instead of sending Epaphroditus with the, um, with the offerings and the help that was needed, he's sending him with this letter. 
with the letter to the Philippians. And it was a big, this was a big sacrifice that Epaphroditus made because we read earlier in chapter two that um, Epaphroditus actually got very, very sick. And we don't know if he got sick on his journey there or if it, he got there and got sick. We don't, that's not told to us, but he got sick. And somehow the church in Philippi found out about it and they were very worried for him. So Paul wanted to make sure that uh, Epaphroditus was strong enough to withstand the journey and he's fine. Everything is fine. God spared his life and gave him his health. And he went on back to uh, uh, Philippi. So that was such a blessing. So um, so now it says, you know um, that you are one of the only, you are the only people who really supported me. You're the only one who sent gifts, who, who helped support me in my ministry, even when I was with another church. I was in Thessalonica which is the church, you know, because Paul writes to the, in Thessalonians, that's to the church in Thessalonia. Um, he was there ministering and, and they didn't even supply his needs then. Okay. So the Philippians, they sent monies or support, however, what kind of support he needed to the church. Um, in Thessalonica, 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 um, to Paul there. And so the Philippians were such a, a wonderful, giving, supportive church. They were just overflowing with um, blessings, if you will, to Paul. And Paul, in verse um, 20, oh, excuse me, in verse 18, um, he talks that, well, Starting in verse 17, he said, I don't, I don't seek a gift. I'm not asking for the money. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm not asking for anything. He said, if anything, I'm asking that you see that you are blessed from your gift. That's a big, that's something big. And we don't talk about that very much, do we? You know, you go into some churches and you hear them ask for tithes and offerings, you know, but um, very rarely do you hear a church um, expressing thanks that God is going to bless those that give. And, and in verse 19, Paul says, God will supply all your needs according to to his riches and glory. Okay. He, he has all the riches. He owns everything. He is, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, as Psalm says. And, um, so he has everything. So there, you know, it's not like he lacks for anything and he knows our need. He knew, he knew the Philippians needs. And Paul was confident that no matter how much they, they did to support himself, Paul, that God would in turn see their generosity and bless them and give them whatever they needed. Now, the key word is need, not want, right? There are too many people out there in this world, in this society, and even the church that talk about getting things that they want, that God will give them whatever they want. That's not, that's not what God says. That's not what Paul is teaching here. And that's not what the scripture teaches. That's not right. He says, he's going to give us everything that we need. So we might be asking for a Maserati or a Mercedes or a BMW. But what we need is a way to get back and forth to work. And that might be a Pinto. <laughs> if it gets us back and forth to work, whatever. It's a Pinto, whatever. 
You know, it doesn't make any difference. That's the need. We might want something, but then that goes back to what Paul was saying before, doesn't it? About being content. Being content. Mm. And my God shall supply all your need. And then what was it that he said um, earlier in the chapter? He says, I've learned the secret of being content with the little or content with a lot. He can do it because Jesus is in him. That's that's the key. Okay, so let's go on. It says, um, so he's talked uh, here in the last of Philippians. He talked to them about Epaphroditus coming back, and he thanked them for their gift, and he thanked them for he thanked the Philippians for supporting him. And then in verse twenty, he says, "Now to God and our God and Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus, and brethren and the brethren with me greet you." Okay, so there obviously were some other believers that were around Paul at some point because he is sending their greetings to them. You know, isn't that isn't that neat to know that? There are believers all over the world, right? And and we can support each other in prayer. We can support each other with writing a letter, sending an email. We can be encouraging to each other. And it is just mind-blowing, right? It is kind of mind-blowing. So here, Paul is, in a sense, very far away from Philippi. Um, and he's saying, guys, you tell every, everybody here says hi. <laughs> and I know that everybody there says hi to me. <laughs> so isn't that nice? And so it says also, get this. It says all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. So apparently the Caesar, which is a big deal, right? The Caesar is a big deal. Where, where he was, I'm assuming it was Rome when he was in prison. I'm not sure. But when he was, he was, there were people in Caesar's household that he had an interaction with somehow. Isn't that kind of interesting? That here he was, a prisoner, but yet Caesar's household, there, it might have been, the, the servants, it might have been the children, it might have been the aunts and the uncles, who knows, I don't know, but I'm just saying that they, there was some kind of connection to Paul, and perhaps the Philippians, when they sent their gift, you know, it might, it might be that, okay, I'm just, I'm just bringing it down to, you know, our level, he, you know, hey, Paul, here, here's a casserole for you. And we made an extra one. You can share it with your friends there. Share it with the house, you know, share it with everybody. I think we made enough for everybody. And so now I'm not saying that it was a casserole, you know, but then, so the, <clears throat> whoever was with Paul at the same time that he shared everything with wants to send word back and say, thanks. Thank you. You know, isn't that neat? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> Caesar's household is a big name. Now, can you imagine the conversations Paul would have had with those people in the household? Now, I, w I saw a footnote here, and it said that there's no evidence of the conversion of any member of the household of Caesar, not then, but later on, like the next generation, there's evidence that whatever happened there with Paul, and who knows who else, somebody in the household of Caesar at one point was converted to Jesus. He got saved. 
can you imagine the uproar that might have gone on in that in that household right wow what a wonderful wonderful study we had in philippians i hope you've enjoyed this as much as i have in fact i probably am going to have to go back and reread this at some point again from front to back the whole letter and maybe take note i think that would be a good idea take note and maybe write my own letter to somebody who supported me oh guys that might be a great idea as homework do we want homework for devotions maybe 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 that's a way for us to get let it sink in to meditate on it if you will okay everybody i hope you have a wonderful day and um, I ask, I would ask a, a prayer for, for you guys, if you wouldn't mind. Pray that the Lord would open up my heart to what we're going to go over next, okay? Well, what we're going to talk about next. And um, that I'm, I'm anxious to hear from the Lord. So I'll be praying for that, and I hope that you'll be praying for it. And if you have something in mind, let me know. Maybe that's that's the Lord's way of telling me go this way. Okay. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day, and we will talk to you real soon. Okay. Bye-bye.